Welcome to our video covering Islington. Now we're going to cover the main part of Islington, which is up and down the A1. Plus, we've got some other secret treats for you as well. Now, what you'll notice in this video is there's plenty of places to eat in this area. So the good news is, if you're hungry, you're never far away from somewhere to stop. So do keep watching, because not only we're going to bring you this area that's just tucked away, but we're also going to bring you the Regent's Canal, which passes through and underneath the streets of Islington, comes out the other side, and you wouldn't believe that from the views that you're in central London. Now, Islington as a borough contains 22 different areas, which is as diverse as this area, which is round by Angel, down to King's Cross, Holloway, Old Street, Pentonville, and other numerous places around this part of London. Now, this cinema is the Screen on the Green and was opened in 1913 and is one of London's oldest continuously running cinemas. The area was originally founded by the Saxons back in 1005 and then it was called Gisledon. The two parts of the name meaning hill and down. Whilst the area that we're in today is extremely flat, as you go further north, the hill rises up towards Highgate, which is quite a steep climb, especially if you're on your bike. Yep, and I've done that a few times myself. The name later changed to Arlden, which remained in use well into the 17th century, when the modern form of Islington arose. In medieval times, Islington was one of many small manors in the area, along with Bernersbury, Newton Bree, or Haybury, and Cannonsbury. Here we're at the point where Upper Street meets Islington High Street, and this road is also known as the A1. This road, the A1, leads all the way from London, all the way to Scotland, to Edinburgh. Now, as we get here to Islington High Street, I love this feel of sort of a villagey feel. And you get the same sort of feel when you're down in Hampstead, and we've got a video coming up on that later on this year. With the tree-lined streets and also all the cafes spilling out onto the pavement, there really is a lovely relaxing feeling as you come down here. Now, I know what people are thinking, and I can almost see the comments coming through, even as I speak, that Islington is a vast area. So why, Steve, have you only covered this part of it and not mentioned any other parts? Well, when people tend to think of Islington and sort of heading up that way, then this is where they tend to come to. They hit Angel Station, which we'll show you later where that is, so at least you know where you're going. But also, it's a lovely villagey feeling around here, which we wanted to cover. Now, for many people coming to this area, it's quite often because they're coming to this place, which is coming up on our right-hand side, which is the Business Design Centre in Islington, which holds many conferences. Which is a perfect thing to remind me to tell you whilst they've got the podcast show happening there at the Business Design Centre. If you haven't caught our podcast yet on your favourite podcast provider, don't forget to go in, type in London Visited, and you'll find over 100 episodes that we've done already. Okay, so we've given you a quick guide to what Islington High Street and Upper Street looks like. But to tell you what, let's go find what's hidden just behind the main roads. As I always say, if you dive off the main roads, that's where you really discover the great places to go and see in London. Here, we're now coming into the area known as Camden Passage. The passage is well known for its antique shops, markets and an array of independent shops, cafes and also restaurants. The passage runs parallel with Islington High Street and is about 20 metres away from it. So get out your phone, look on your Google Maps and you won't believe how close it is, but how away from the Islington High Street it feels.
Now, best days to come down are every Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday at Hoston Antique Market, right here where we're walking now. Also, there's a book market on a Thursday and a Friday as well, and then a market with an eclectic mix of vintage and retro clothes, pictures, vintage luggage, interesting one-off items, collectibles, and bric-a-brac on the Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. If you can't make those particular days to see the markets, then don't worry. The shops, the restaurants, the cafes are open seven days a week down here. I think this is one of these secret gems of London. Just look at all the different coloured buildings as well. Really brings it to life. Now the passage was built as an alley along the backs of the houses on Upper Street and then Islington High Street back in 1767. The Antiques Market was founded in the 1960s in conjunction with the Metropolitan Borough of Islington, but the venture was initially successful, attracting over 350 traders. But recently the centre of Islington has undergone regeneration, leading to higher rents being asked at the renewal of the leases. Camden Passage is just another one of those London secrets. If you're heading in this direction, do make sure you come down here. The Camden Head Pub here on Camden Passage is well known for its comedy nights and actually has a comedy night every night of the week. So if you're in the area and you're around in the evening, then it might be worth popping your head in, see who's on stage, who's up and coming and who may make you laugh. Now, if you're coming down where the antiques are on, you'll quite often find along these railings here on the left-hand side by the bike, you'll find a number of stalls here as well. It's great to find places in London with individualistic shops, so this is a great place to come. And if you're wondering what the bunting is doing going across, because we have the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations happening very, very soon, this was filmed just before those celebrations. For opening hours, a lot of the shops down here are open 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, and at weekends opening earlier at 8 o'clock and closing later at 6pm to make sure that they catch the trade and also the people coming down to come and have a look, especially at weekends. If you want further information on the shops, the opening times or anything else down here at all, all you need to do is go to camdenpassageislington.co.uk. If you're in the UK or watch some of the UK programs, you may recognise some of these places down here because Camden Passage has made lots of appearances on programs such as Cash in the Attic, Bargain Hunt and other TV programs. Now that adds to the excitement when you come down here because you never know if you're going to bump into a TV crew. One of the retail areas that's really expanded down here are the health and the beauty sector. There's even a day spa down here, so if you're coming down, you could book that in advance. Really hope you're enjoying this video. And if you are, do us a favor, give us a thumbs up so we can spread this around YouTube more to other people so they can love London as well. As we leave Camden Passage, we're gonna take a three minute walk to our next delight to show you over here in Islington. And it's here through these trees. Can you see it? 
Yes, it's the Regent's Canal. Now we've previously covered the Regent's Canal in a walk that we did going from Cold Drops Yard over at King's Cross all the way round to London Zoo at Regent's Park via Camden Market. Here we pick it up at Islington as it comes out of the tunnel. And the incredible thing about walking along the Regent's Canal in London is it couldn't feel more away from London if it tried. Now this tunnel which cuts underneath Islington itself and is also marked by way markers above on the street so you can see where the tunnel is going is nearly one kilometre long, 878 metres. The tunnel was opened in 1818 and it takes you from here at Islington all the way to nearly through to King's Cross. The Regent's Canal is just under 14 kilometres long, which is about 8.6 miles. And it takes you from Paddington Basin in the west, where it joins the Grand Union Canal. And it takes you all the way around to the Limehouse Basin, another video we've covered, and I'll put a link to that in the top right hand corner, over meeting the River Thames in East London, just under the gaze of Canary Wharf. The Regent's Canal, opened in the early 1800s, was built so it could actually transfer goods coming in from the Midlands via the Grand Union Canal all the way round to Limehouse Basin. And at Limehouse Basin, it could get onto seafaring ships which would take the goods from the Midlands all the way overseas. Back in the late 1970s, the electricity board had a problem. How are they going to transport 400 kilovolt cables around London as part of the national grid to be able to get power to all parts of London? And then they thought, we can use the towpath of the Regent's Canal. So underneath the pattern brickwork are the cables carrying this voltage. Because of the volume of roads in London, there are so many bridges to go through and under. A lot of them are quite low, so if you're tall, you're gonna to need to duck. But as you go through, you always get an amazing view out the other side. And how about this one? And actually, would you actually believe that you are that close to central London when you're looking at this old mill area? The weeping willow trees by the side of the water really add to the scene. And once again, it's so hard to believe that we're so close to central London here at Islington. In the canal's heyday, this was one of the busiest pieces of the region's canal. And that's because the boats would come down here from Manchester through Paddington Basin all the way to here, which is the city road lock. The boats would then go through the lock downstream and then on the other side, you'll see that in a minute, is the basin here at City Road where they'd offload all of their cargo. And this is why you have warehouses, you've got wharfs, you've got various other bits and pieces which still remain. Although a lot of them have now been put into modern buildings and you can see here are flats overlooking this area or offices. The locks are still in use today by leisure boats and if you hang around long enough like we did here, there's a guy that's closing the gates ready for a boat to come through in the other direction. As with all the other locks on the canal, the city road lock was built as a pair of locks. The use of paired locks was partially to save water, as water could be transferred between the locks rather than discharging it all into the lower pond when a lock was emptied. This made the operation of the locks a lot more complex and they were permanently manned during the heyday of the canal. Following the end of commercial traffic and the growth of leisure boating, the locks were reverted to operation by boat crews because before they'd had lock keepers who had to work a 24 hour system to make sure there was coverage at all times. This is part of the city road basin and as you can see, you've got lots of modern flats now where the wolves used to be. Before we turn around and come back, let's carry on down the towpath. We'll look at the other basin here at City Road where they used to unload, and then we'll head back.
As you can see from the video, the towpath is also used by cyclists as well. So you've got to be careful, especially when coming around the bridges, because you never know if a bike's coming from the other direction. So just a word of warning when you're on the towpaths. If you're coming to London, you like the look of the Regent's Canal and think, actually, do you know what? I fancy a trip on that. Then there are a number of options open to you. These include barges, which will take a number of people at a time and take them for a tour up and down the canal. There's also another part of the canal which runs from Maida Vale, which is Little Venice, all the way through to Camden Town, a river bus that operates. So you can check that out, and that's probably a cheaper way of doing the trips, but also it will take in some of the great London sites around Regent's Park as well. And one final way to get on the water is over at Paddington Basin. There's a, a company called Go Boat where you can hire a boat over there and take it up and down the canal. I don't know what the prices are like, but if you're interested, go have a look. So the canal from Islington High Street is no more than a five minute walk. And here on Islington High Street, if you fancy getting some food, there's an Amazon Fresh shop, which is one of the few that they have in London at the moment. And back on the main road, what we'll do is we'll show you where the station is. So it just gives you your bearings and how easy it is to get anywhere because you've got Angel Underground Station very close by. As we head towards the underground station, it's absolutely incredible that wherever you go in London, there are little places, little hidden gems that not many people know about. So I've put a playlist up in the top right hand corner, what we call our secret London. So if you are coming to London and you fancy getting some ideas of secret places to go, have a look in there. One thing to remember, if you're getting around London, another great way to do it is to hire the Santander bikes. These give you great flexibility. As you've seen, there are many buses that get here to Islington High Street, but the nearest underground station is this one here at Angel, which is on the Northern Line. It's also the one with the longest escalator on the network as well. In 2006, a Norwegian man made the headlines after skiing down the escalator at the station. Yeah, I think he must have missed the snow slopes. So what was your favourite part of the tour around Islington? Was it the Regent's Canal? Or alternatively, was it the shops down in Camden Passage? Or was it just the walk down Islington High Street? Let us know in the comments down below. We've shown you Camden Passage, which is also famous for its antiques. But the most famous place in London for its antiques is the Portobello Road. And we've been there. And here's a video up in the top right hand corner of our visit to Portobello Road. So if you click on that, I'll see you in there.